Hello, everyone. Welcome to the APH Virtual Excel Academy. We are so happy to have you with us today. Today is recreation and leisure. Two pretty big words. We're looking past the IEP. So feel free to get comfortable, but put your thinking caps on and we're going to talk about recreation and leisure today. Welcome, welcome. Glad to have our friends here. Feel free to drop in the chat hello if you're watching the recording. I hope you are enjoying as well. Today for the APH Virtual Excel Academy, it is recreation and leisure, looking past the IEP. Hi, Donnie. Glad to have you with us today. As our friends get settled, one more time, this is the APH Virtual Excel Academy. This is meant for our students with more multiple impairments. It might take a little longer to respond. You might have someone actually helping you respond, and that is okay. We are talking about recreation and leisure, and we're talking about students who are a little bit older. So just keep that in mind. We are glad to have you. Hello, Nikki. Today, our instructor is Laura Lee Whitney. Hi, Laura Lee, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. And I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Leanne. I'm so happy to be here today. And I want to thank you all for taking some time out of your day to join me. I appreciate to see your faces, but it's okay. You choose not to share your video. Today, I will be asking for some involvement from you all. So if you can pull that chat box up, get it ready to go, because we'll be using that today throughout my presentation. Um, as I kind of give you some more information, I will be asking some questions. So as Leanne stated, my name is Laura Lee Whitney. I have worked with Utah Schools for the Deaf and Blind for about 12 years. And during that time, I have worked with many students who are transitioning to job placements or who are students that are in that transition age. So I'm excited to share what I've learned through that time and give you guys a little bit of information that I think will be helpful for all of you as well. I am going to take a moment to share my screen with you. I have prepared a PowerPoint today and I think all of you might be able to see that. So my title for today is Recreation and Leisure, and we're going to look past the IEP. As Leanne stated, this is a webinar that is intended for individuals who have multiple disabilities, who are within the seventh grade to 12th grade, um, and possibly even to post high. Um, you, and their families, their friends, or other professionals who work with them. But if this doesn't include you, don't worry. Everyone is welcome, and we're happy to have you today. All right. So today we will be talking about recreation and leisure, like I said what that means, what they are, and what that would look like on IEP goals. So after meeting with me today, you should be able to identify or recognize which activities are considered recreation and leisure. And you can see that I have hobbies on my slide here. We'll talk a little bit about that word because it does have a very similar meaning. You should also be able to take the information that I've shared with you and use that 
to make a very personalized decision on activities that you would like to do, activities that you would like to see on your IEP, and activities that would have a positive benefit on our lives. Because we all want that. It's a good thing. So some of you may be thinking, hmm, I think I've heard of the term recreation and leisure before. Sounding kind of familiar. And if you're thinking that, you are probably very right. A lot of you might be familiar with the term recreation and leisure because you might have experience with it in your own lives, maybe on IEP goals. So I'd like to take some time for those of you who have heard of recreation and leisure. If this is something you've heard, you can type yes in the chat box or a Y for yes. Or if you haven't, that's okay. You can type in no or an N. And the picture on my slide has a picture of a little girl with a pink striped shirt and she is holding a pencil to her chin with her head tilted up and her eyes are looking up like she's thinking, hmm. I see that Donnie in our chat box has responded why. That means yes. Donnie has heard of the term recreation and leisure. Thank you, Donnie. We have another one who says in our chat box, this is Nydia. She says, yes, she has heard of it too. My second picture is of a little boy and he is grabbing his chin and puckering out his bottom lip. He's also looking up to the corner and his eyes are up like, hmm, I think I've heard of this. I know as a teacher that I have written goals for recreation and leisure for some of my students on their IEPs. I'd like to know for those of you who have heard of the term recreation and leisure, or even those of you who are not so sure, do you have recreation and leisure goals on your IEP? I know I have written them for my students. I see Donnie in our chat box says, and no, he does not have recreation and leisure goals. Hopefully today you can get some more information on what those will look like. And maybe in the future, that will be something that is on your IEP. All right, we have another response from Nydia who says, and for no too. I think today will be a good time for us to talk about what those goals would look like and how we can implement them. Okay, some of you might be thinking, yes, I do have IUP goals that are recreation and leisure. And some of you might feel like your teachers have written them for you, but not so much with you, or you don't know what they are and you want to have involvement in those goals. For those of you who responded no, I want you to feel like you can take ownership of your goals. I want you to feel like you know how to take ownership of what recreation and leisure goals would look like. So let's talk about that. How would we be able to take ownership of your goals? I have shared three steps with you today on my slide or my PowerPoint.
and I'd like to talk about those three steps a little bit more in detail. So I have my three steps listed on the right. The first one is speak up, let your voice be heard, communicate with your teacher or your parents about what kinds of activities that you find enjoyable. What kinds of goals do you want on your IEP or your individualized educational plan? I know that your teachers would be so happy to hear that you want to be involved and that you want to help them with those goals that are for you. Because those IEP goals are for you. So that's take some ownership in that. And your teachers will be so happy and excited that you'd like to help them with that. I see in our chat box, Nydia says independent living. Sometimes these goals can look very similar and they're called independent living or they can be called recreation and leisure. That's a great point. Thank you for bringing that up, Nydia. We'll talk a little bit about that more today too. Our second step is to be informed. So we need to know what activities are considered really good goals and what activities might not be. We want to make sure that when we contribute and work with our teachers on our IEP goals that we have some information so that it can be meaningful. We want this time to be a meaningful time when you work with your team to help you make those goals that are all about you. This is you. When you feel more informed about what those goals look like, you can contribute to your IEP in a very meaningful way. Okay. Our last step for taking ownership of your goals is to know what your needs are. Today, we're gonna talk about a lot of different kinds of activities and some of them will be great for some students and others will be better for you. Some of them will be a lot of movements and body and others will be working with our minds. So it's important for you to know what your needs are, what you want out of these goals and maybe how you might need some more support. So I'm gonna talk just a little bit about this one today, but I do wanna invite you to my session next month on March 18th where we will be talking a lot more about knowing your needs. And we will be talking about what recreation and leisure activities would be good for you and how you can possibly turn some of those goals into job placements in the future or work. Taking something that we enjoy to do and turning it into work. That sounds exciting. So now we're going to talk about the meaning. I've said recreation and leisure a lot today. And so I wanna make sure that you guys know what those words mean. To be informed, we need to kind of know what they mean. And so we're gonna take a look at both of the definitions of the word. Sometimes you can see recreation used in place of leisure or instead. Sometimes you'll just see the word leisure or sometimes you can see both of them together. But their meanings are very similar. So 
their activities can look very much the same. First definition we're gonna talk about is recreation. And the definition for recreation is an activity done for enjoyment when one is not working. Okay, so let's break that down a little bit more. Done for enjoyment. So that would be something that brings you joy, something that you enjoy doing either for a long or short period of time. It should also be something that you like to do again and again, maybe something every day or something that you do once a week, but it's something that you enjoy doing a lot of times and you don't get bored. That's what's gonna bring you enjoyment. This can be some things that you are already good at because when we're good at things, they make us feel better about ourselves. I know when I take on a skill or an activity and I'm good at it, it makes me happy. And when I'm happy, I feel good about myself and that all brings joy. It can even be something that maybe you're not good at yet, but you have seen or heard other people doing and it looks like something that you think might be fun or something that you'd like to try. And it's important for us to try fun, new, different activities. Just remember when we're learning new skills, it might take us a little bit more time to find something that we're good at and that's okay. The next part of the meaning is when you are not working. Okay, so we haven't talked about what activities are work activities and which ones are not yet, but we know that recreation means times when we're not doing chores at home or doing schoolwork or homework. Those activities that you do at school might not be, or any other activities that you do that are job related. So those are not the activities that we are talking about. The definition for leisure talks more about free time. So that would mean time when you are on a break, um, either from school or work, or you have some free time where you've finished all of your work and you don't have to be to your next assignment yet. And you have a little bit of free time, some downtime, if you will. Or this is time that is set aside very specifically in your schedule for things that you enjoy. Okay, so if you're thinking about free time and it being designated away from work, this would look like in your schedule where you have a time set aside just for those things that you like. The definition for free time also talks about um, enjoyment. How we choose to spend our free time can be really important for our lives. When we choose activities that we enjoy, it can be good for our physical health, our mental health. It can be a great stress reliever, or it can be something that helps us when we have behaviors that might come from stress. It can be something that you uh, brings you satisfaction in your relationships with your family and your friends and your other peers in school, because some of these activities are very social and it brings people together. 
and so you feel good about your relationships. It can even be something that brings you self-worth and confidence and something that makes you feel more independent in your life. We have a response in our chat that says band American and listening to music and bands is a recreation we're going to talk about. I'm, if I'm not clear on what your chat meant, Nydia, please make sure that I understand and you can give me some more information. Okay. Some of those activities that we choose to do in our free time can also be something that teaches us job skills. And this is going to be an important part that I share with you and my next one as well. Taking some of those recreation and turning them into possible placements for work, I think that'd be pretty cool. You're taking something that you enjoy and then you are using it for your job placement in the future. I like that. I enjoy what I do for work. And so it's important to have that aspect. We have another comment in our chat from Donnie who says, I love karaoke, all in caps. That means he loves it a lot. And Donnie, I have to agree. It's a lot of fun. Even if you might not sound as good as the people who recorded it, that's something that still brings you joy and it's still fun to do. I love that. Here's what we'll talk about the word hobby. I mentioned before, you probably won't see these on your IEPs, but for some people who enjoy these recreation and leisure activities that we talk about, they will call them hobbies. So sometimes you'll have people ask you, what is your hobby? Or they will say, my hobby is. So if you hear that word hobby, it's another word for recreation and leisure. And for a lot of those, they break them down into types of categories. So we have active and passive. Those are kind of abstract words. And so I broke it down into a more of a needs category. And that's what we're gonna talk about for today. So I have on my slide here, an activity that is done regularly in one's leisure time for pleasure. So I'm starting to see a hop, like a trend here, or a theme, or a pattern. Recreation, leisure, and hobby all talk about something that's done for fun, something that brings you joy, and it talks about it is an activity that is set aside from your regular work schedule. Okay, hold on to those things because those are gonna come up when we talk about examples. So we have our categories of physical. Those will be a lot of the activities that get your body moving, get you out and about with your hands or your legs. We have mental, those are going to be activities that use a lot of your brain and your thinking. They might have a little bit of physical, but this is something that uses our minds a lot. Creative is a really good one. This is a very popular category for hobby. A lot of people really enjoy expressing themselves. And when you're creative, there's, you really can't go wrong. If you say it's creative and you think that that's how it best describes you, no one's to say that you're right or wrong because creative allows everyone 
the freedom to be who they are. It's probably why it's such a popular hobby or activity. And then we have observer. These are the kinds of activities that you enjoy, but maybe you don't want to participate as much. You want to sit back and kind of watch others. And that's okay. That is also considered a recreation or leisure activity. So for those of you who cannot see my slide, I have what activities do they look like? So we're gonna talk now about what activities are recreation and leisure. So all of these are activities that you might experience or enjoy in recreation and leisure. So on the left side, I have physical those physical need categories. And you can see that I have letters next to the activities. So I want to invite you all to follow along with me, or if you can, you can read ahead. But I'm going to read these activities. Our first one is A, bowling. So if bowling is something that you like to do, you can enter A into the chat box, or you can choose to type out the word bowling, or you can choose B for skiing. We have C for playing sports. Playing sports will be things like soccer or baseball or basketball. Donnie in our chat box says he likes to go bowling. That's an activity I'm not very good at, but I still enjoy doing. I need a lot more practice with bowling. We have D for ice skating or roller skating. E for golf. Golf is a nice summer sport. There's probably not too many people enjoying golfing right now. We have F for hiking. Hiking in Utah is big. We have a lot of mountains and trails, but they might be popular in your state too. We have G for camping, H for boating, I for yoga. This is one where I can enter in the chat box. I, I like yoga. That's one of my hobbies that I choose to do and I enjoy. And J for swimming. So you can see all of these activities are using our legs for hiking, or our arms for swinging the club in golf, or in yoga, bending and twisting and moving to make all of those poses. Playing sports is a one that we do a lot of physical movements with. That can be team sports or single sports. Okay. To the right of my slide, I have my our mental needs categories. These ones are using numbers instead of letters. So if you'd like to respond to physical activities, you can still do so in the chat. But if you're ready to move on to the mental need category, you can join those as well. We have reading for fun, which is one I like to do. I like that one very much. 
we have writing. And that's creative writing, like writing stories. We have our chat box from Donnie. You're so active today. Thank you for being so communicative. We have one, he says he likes to read for fun. I do too. I really like to read. Three, we have thinking of new ideas. I like to think of new ideas, how I can make things easier or how we can come up with new topics to talk about with our friends. I have four for board games. This is one that my nephew really loves. We have five for card games, six puzzles, and seven meditation. So you can see all of those activities might take a little bit of movement for your hand to write, but it's mostly your mind who's doing all the work or puzzles. We need to put those puzzle pieces together, but it's your eyes who are looking for similarities or differences in pieces. Oh, I have a great question here. We have Donnie who says, what is meditation? That seven is meditation. And meditation is a time when we sit with our minds and we try to clear out all the distracting thoughts and just be in our mind and have clear, if just a clear head. Meditation and yoga often go together. That's a great question. The next section on our slide, um, so this is a new separate slide, but we're going to continue with our needs categories of creative. We did start the alphabet over again so that you can respond with the letter. So we have A for scrapbooking and B for painting, C for sewing, D for gardening. Gardening is one that can sometimes almost even look like yard work. But gardening is different where you get to creatively place the flowers in a pattern that is appealing or you could put them in pots. E is pottery. Maybe you want to make the pot for your gardening. We have F for woodworking. This is one I think would be a lot of fun. This is something I've seen or heard of other people doing, but I have not done for myself. That's something that I would like to do. G is drawing is very similar to painting. Painting and drawing can sometimes be considered very close, but painting typically involves more color, where drawing can be either a pencil or a scribe. We have H for photography and I for knitting. Oops. We don't have any responses yet for creative, but we will move to observing. So these are the activities where one, you like to watch sports. And for those of you who have been missing sports, this is something that you can now enjoy again. We've got our sports games on. Two, you can listen to music or three, listening to podcasts. Listening to podcasts is something I really like to do. Four is watching plays. Plays can be on school or they can be um, when you go to the Hale Theater or there's Broadway shows. Those are shows where people dance and sing on stage and that can be fun. We have two responses here. Donnie in our chat box says, 
he likes to listen to music. And Nydia also says she likes to listen to music. That is one of the most popular observing activities that anyone can do. And this is something that anyone in any culture likes to do. Donnie read ahead. Awesome, thank you. And he said in our chat, he likes to watch TV as well. And we have watching movies. Okay, this gives us a pretty general good idea of what activities are recreation and or leisure. I wanna spend some time talking about which ones are not. Hello, Laura Lee. This is Robin from the background. Hello, Robin. Thank you. I wanted to let you know that Isabel has her hand up. And so, Isabel, we have already given you permission to talk. Go ahead and ask a question or make a comment about our topic right now. What's scrapbooking? Oh, that's a very good question. Scrapbooking is when you take pictures of your friends or family or your pets and you put them on um, some colorful pages. You can add stickers, um, you can do stamps, and then you make a book for you to look at later and you can look through all of your pictures. And so it's kind of reminiscing on your friends and fun times that you had, but it's also a great way to get your creative juices flowing and focus your mind so that you can express yourself. Oh, that I've never done question. that before. I think that's a great thing to ask. Maybe we, that's something that you can look into. Lots of different colors, you can get scissors that have different patterns. Ma or Robin in our chat says that she likes to make digital scrapbooking. Oh. That's a lot more common these days too. You can have digital scrapbooking where you arrange the pictures on colorful pages, kind of like a storybook. So it's a storybook of your life. That's cool. Yeah, that's something that I used to enjoy a lot when I was younger. Oh. Thank you for your comment. Thank you. You're welcome. Or rather, it was more of a question, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. All right. If anyone else has questions, do feel free to raise your hand. And Monica, or I'm sorry, Robin or Leanne can let you in. So the slide, I've gone back to our slide with activities that are not recreation and leisure. So we have any kind of schoolwork, that's homework that you've taken home or schoolwork that you do during the day when you're at school. Remember we said that this in your schedule, those recreation and leisure are set aside from work. So this could be work for a job. Maybe you have a job in your classroom or your school to help out or a job after school. That's kind of work that's not considered recreation or leisure. We have cooking for meals. So I do wanna talk about this one a little bit because some people like me do enjoy cooking for recreation. But the cooking for meals, like maybe for breakfast and lunch and dinner, and for all your friends at school or your family at home, or maybe you're someone who's a chef, someone who cooks for a living, cooking probably might not be the best recreation and leisure in your opinion, because it's not so much fun anymore. But baking can be something that is fun. So 
Sometimes our activities are gonna look very similar to activities that are not recreation and leisure. The next one we have is chores. I just skipped the screen, I apologize, I've gone back. We have chores, that's like washing the dishes, vacuuming, you can pick up your clothes in your bedroom. I know that when I'm done with my chores and I've spent some time cleaning my house, it makes me feel really good about myself, but it's not necessarily a recreation or leisure skill. Nydia has chores at home, like cleaning the table, yes. Does anyone else have chores that they do at home? You can respond in the chat. Studying is something that is not a leisure activity, but it can sometimes look a lot like reading for fun or writing. They involve books, just like reading for fun does or writing, but studying is more that you are using your mind to learn something new or that you're reading something so that you can recall it later. You can do fun things with books and writing and even computers, but if you're studying, it's not really a recreation. Yard work is the one that looks a lot like gardening, but yard work would be more mowing the lawn, raking the leaves, or something that might be very pertinent to a lot of us right now is shoveling snow. It's a good workout, but it's not a recreation or leisure skill. And grocery shopping. Grocery shopping is not a leisure activity because there's a lot of planning that goes into grocery shopping. You think about what you wanna make first, and then you write down a list of the ingredients so that you have all the ingredients to make it. And then you go to the grocery store with your list. But other kinds of shopping can be fun, like maybe shopping for a new outfit for school, for shopping with your friends, for jewelry or shoes. That can, kind, that can be shopping that is done for fun and not for groceries. Okay, so I want to know what you guys think. So we're gonna take a little break. We do have one more comment in our chat before we move on from Nydia. She says, or a new bracelet. I like new bracelets. Shopping for new bracelets is a fun recreational activity that we can do. Okay, so for those of you who can join us, we're gonna take a little break. I know sometimes when I'm at my computer for a long time, my shoulders can start to get higher and higher to my ears. So I want you to take your hands and kind of just push your shoulders down. Let's move those shoulders back and forth maybe. Roll those shoulders back if you can. You can lift them up to your ears and then lower them. All right. When we're at the computer for a long time, our bodies can kind of move to a position that's uncomfortable. So let's take your head and turn it all the way to the left. Get those neck muscles stretching. Get the blood flowing and turning to center. I want everyone to be aware of their bodies because we're gonna ask some questions. I've now turned my head to the right and back to center. All right, and let's get those arms up. We're gonna ask some questions, get your typing fingers ready because this is where I'm gonna ask you what you think. So my next slides are going to be pictures for those of you who can see them. 
You can follow along. For those of you who cannot, I will be explaining the pictures. And I want you to tell me if it is a recreation or a leisure activity, and you can reply yes or why for yes, or if they are not, and you can reply N for no. The first picture I have on my slide is a family who are riding mountain bikes. They are all in a row and they all have their helmets on. It's important to remember safety. They are riding their bikes up a mountain. Donnie says, why for yes? He thinks this is a recreation or leisure activity. They all seem to have smiles on their faces. They're outside. Nydia says yes as well. Okay. Two yeses. I'm thinking this might be a recreation or leisure activity. You guys are right. This is because they are moving their bodies and they are all together, which is a social component of some of our activities. Great job. Okay. Our second picture is a picture of a girl with dark hair. She is sitting at a table and it looks to be a library behind her. She is writing some notes. She has her computer in front of her and a book that she has open in front of her. She has some other books to the side. It looks like she might be learning something. Donnie in our chat box says, N, no. Okay, I think you might be right, Donnie. I think she is not reading for fun. It doesn't look like she's writing a story. Nydia in our chat box also says no. And it doesn't look like she's playing any games on the computer. Okay. I think she's studying. And we talked about how studying is not a recreation or a leisure activity. Great work, guys. We have another picture here. This picture is taken from above. We can only see the person's arms but there are a lot of very colorful puzzle pieces around. She has, it looks like three piles or maybe two piles and she's working on one in the middle. We have Donnie who says, why for yes? The picture is of a puzzle. And Nydia in our chat box also says, yes, this can be considered a creative leisure because, oh no, I'm sorry. This is a mental, my apologies. She's using her mind and her eyes and a little bit her hands. This is a recreation or leisure skill, but there are skills that we can learn from this that we can apply to our job skills later. Okay, this next picture is a picture of a little girl with a spray bottle and her mother is standing next to her. They both have cloths on a window pane. You can see a little bit of the outside window, but not much. We have our first response from Donnie who says, no, this looks like with the spray bottle and the wipe and the window, I think they might be cleaning. No, this is not a recreation or leisure. Our next picture has an older gentleman kneeling down with a paintbrush. 
he is painting on the wall with a young girl. I think it might be his granddaughter who is next to him. She has a paintbrush. You can see on the wall, they are using a lot of color. They even have painted some hearts. There is a man behind him who is on a ladder. It looks like they are out in their community, maybe painting a wall, bright, colorful images and paint. So this one would be a painting activity. Sometimes painting, like for if we're painting our walls inside of our house, might not be so much of a recreation and leisure, but they look like they are covering a cement wall out in their neighborhood for people to walk by and see it and it to bring them joy. So this painting would be considered this is a picture of recreation and leisure. All right, our next slide has an older man sitting on a couch with a younger boy. The younger boy has a guitar in his lap and he has his hands positioned over the strings. Donnie in our chat box says, yes. I think you're right. It looks like he is still learning how to play music, but music, either listening to music or playing music are both recreation and leisure. Nydia also says yes. Okay, I think our consensus is in. This is any kind of music. So not just guitars, it can be other instruments, that we're learning how to play, those would be recreation and leisure. Great work, guys. This activity looks like, oh, we have a chat from Nydia before I explain the rest of this picture. She says clarinet. Very good. My friend played a clarinet in school. We had a lot of fun and I played the flute. But those both are Recreation and leisure. Thank you, Nadia. She says, oh, wow. This next picture is an, another outside picture. It looks to be taken on a hill or a mountain. It's probably more accurately a mountain. And we have some people who are hiking up the mountain. They have smiles on their faces. Some of them have hats. Donnie says, yes. This does look like a recreation and leisure. Others have backpacks and sunglasses. Nydia also says, yes. Very good. This is the hiking that we mentioned in our physical needs category. People are hiking, they're outside. If you went hiking outside right now, it probably would not look the same. All right, this is a fun one. We talked a little bit about music. This picture is of a girl who has headphones on and it looks like she has an iPhone in her hand and she is raising her arms and dancing and smiling. She has a very big grin on her face. Donnie and Nydia both said yes. This is a picture of someone listening to music. This is an observing needs category, recreation or leisure activity.
You might even call it a hobby. Maybe she's listening to some music that she made. That could be a hobby too. Okay. This one might, we're gonna need to put our thinking caps on for this one. Remember, so the picture is of a man who has a tall chef's hat on, a long white chef's hat. And he has um, an apron and a shirt that are also white. He's working at a table with some meat that he's cutting and he has some plates with other ingredients on them. There might be some ginger and soy sauce. Donnie says no. I think Donnie's on to something because this man looks like he works as a chef for a living. Mm. I'm sure his food is very delicious to taste. Nadia also says, no, this is not. And you guys are right. Cooking when it is for meals or when you are working for a job are not recreation and leisure. Okay, this picture has a lot of color and there are three women who have lots of bags on their arms, lots of colorful shopping bags. And one girl is pointing to a mannequin in a window who's wearing a bright green sweater with yellow shorts. The girls look like they're smiling. They're not at a grocery store, but it does look like they're shopping. What do we think? Shopping when it's not at a grocery store with your friends. It looks like they're shopping for clothes. This would be considered a recreation and leisure activity. It looks so much like shopping for grocery stores maybe, huh? This is a question that's kind of tricky. Nidia agrees, she says yes. This would be recreation and leisure. It's not something that we can do today or um, with our current situation, but trying on clothes or window shopping is something that they call it. When you walk by and see all the beautiful things and clothes on the mannequins and think, I wanna see what that looks like on me. That's fun. And you get that social aspect. You get to be with your friends. That one is a little bit tricky. This next one is gonna be a, a lot more clear. So we have a picture of a person. We can only see their legs in a pair of jeans, but they are standing out in the grass. She has a rake, or he has a rake, and there's a big pile of leaves that's in front of her. And you can see behind her that there's more leaves that need to be gathered. Donnie in our chat box says no. I think, I think you're right. She might find enjoyment after all of the leaves are raked that would bring her happiness or she might be doing it for a kind deed for a neighbor and that would bring you happiness but it's not something we do for fun. Nidia agrees. And this is not a leisure or recreation. Okay. All right. Here's another one that might be a little tricky. We have a father who is standing in front of a pot or rather a pan 
it looks to be of tomatoes and vegetable or peppers, maybe some other vegetables, carrots. And he's with this little boy. He's chopping. Maybe he's teaching his son how to cook a nice meal for the family. Donnie in our chat box says yes. Okay. They look like they're having fun. They're taking their time. So, and Nydia also says, yes, you're right. This is an activity where cooking would be considered recreation and leisure. They're taking some time. They're having fun with it. And I am gonna have to stop you there, Laura Lee. We have thank gone you. right to the minute. And I wanna say thank you. What a great way to think about recreation and leisure. Really think about which ones are recreation, which ones are leisure. And and that was that was tricky for some people, I think. Yeah. Now. You have another one coming up. You're going to be joining us again March 18th. So if you want to go further in those recreation and leisures, come join us. But next week is on Tuesday, Young Man Camp. Spend an hour with us talking about young man things. On Wednesday is Money Masters. Really talking about your money now. And then Thursday is living and learning with senses in our home. And we're over time. So I'm going to say goodbye, everyone. Thank you, closed captioner. Have a great afternoon and a good weekend. Goodbye.